Postgres SQL is simple to set up and simple to connect. But let's see how we query that database directly from the code itself. Now again, just remember that we're building it in Python here, so we'll be looking at Python specific libraries, but this will work across any language, as long as it supports Postgres. Even PHP supports Postgres, so there's no excuse. Now in this REPL, you'll have to set your database up once again. Make sure you set it up, make sure you turn it on, and then use your pinned commands to create the table and populate it with users before we start. Now we are gonna use some of the environmental variables so we can bring in the connection to the database without having to hard code any of our information into the REPL itself. I'll start by looking at my secrets and you'll see there that all of the database information I could possibly need is there for the taking. But if I import OS to allow that to work, we can bring that in in a moment. We're also going to import the Psychop G2 library, which is a common library in Python for connecting to Postgres servers and allows us to do it in pretty much one line. Our first job is to connect to the server. Just like in most SQL based activities, we're going to create a variable called con for connection and make that equal to Psychop G2 dot connect. And then in the brackets, all we need to do is give the database URL. Let's take that from our secrets. Finding the database URL in the access part, I'm gonna copy this bit of code and simply paste it in the brackets. Running this just to check we don't get any connection errors and we're good means I have already directly from my code connected to that database. So let's start off very simply and create a simple command line program that will add users to a database. I'm gonna put a line in to add a new user and then I'm going to ask the user for their username and their password probably don't want to show the password on the screen so I'm going to import get pass and use that to show the password which will hide that from the user's view. I'm also going to need the email because that's part of my schema but everything else the ID and the timestamp are set automatically. We may ask for the password a second time just to do some simple validation and I'm going to add a little while true loop here that keeps asking for the passwords if they don't match. Now on to the fun part. Let's use our connection to directly query the database and insert this user. So I need to create a cursor, which is Python's way of sending queries to the database. And then we can simply execute. And you'll see here that Ghostwriter's made a good stab of that. So I'll change username to name because that is the field name that I used in the table, as you can see on the right hand side there. Now, if you wonder what the percent %s is, that's a placeholder for a string. And it's really important that when you build queries, you pass the data variables into it like this. This keeps it more secure than simply using something like an F string to pull all the data in one place and send a string directly to the database. By using this method, the variables username, email and password are substituted in that order with the percent %s symbols that we see. Now let's run this to see what happens. So I can add my user with the username Katie, email katie at mail.com the password and it finishes. But let's see if anything's been updated. If we go back from our users and go back into the database, we'll see the most recent version. Ah, and it doesn't seem to have worked. Well, one thing to remember when changing any data using cursor is that you do need to actually commit the command, tell it to go. So con.commit will actually say, yeah, do the data change, please. I'm also gonna close my cursor because I finished using it. And let's try that again with the same user Go back and click on the table again, which performs the select query, and you'll see that we've added Katie. Notice as well that the ID number is one above where it should be. That's because we've tried to add a user and haven't actually committed the changes. So the index has increased. This doesn't matter, but it's worth pointing out that the query actually went to the server. We just didn't tell it to save it. So there we go. It's as simple as that to add data directly from the terminal. But you'll probably be wanting to work on something a bit more visual or a bit more exciting. Let's take a look at how we can convert that to something like Flask. I've already provided some Flask code in the readme. Go grab that and paste that into the main.py. This is a very, very simple Flask program and it's simply loading a form template that's hidden in the folder templates and called crate.html. That's hidden away from you at the moment, but you can view it by clicking on the kebab menu on the files tab and, sh and viewing hidden files, but it's not necessary for this. Using this code, we can now start working on 
Using this code, we can work on getting that to process. If you've not used Flask before, it's very, very straightforward. It's just Python with a web server built in. But one of the first things we need to do is deal with what happens when the user clicks sign up on the form. I've told the form that it's going to use the post method to send it to a URL forward slash create on my server. So we need to define an app route for dealing with the post method in slash create. We then need a uniquely named subroutine to run that code. And this is where you start. Because from this starting point, you're going to write the code, take the information from the form and create a brand new user in your table completely automatically. When done, you should redirect the user to a page with a success message. Now, of course, this is all really cool, but all we're really doing at the minute is putting data in. In the next lesson, we're going to look at how we query the database to pull data out and be able to act upon it inside Python. Bye.